Hello and welcome to the um, Sad Artist tutorial on epoxy resin. This is clear epoxy resin, okay? So, first thing we're going to need is some health and safety gear. Rubber gloves. This stuff, uh, depending on what you get, is not that dangerous, uh, but still it's better to take precautions, because it can burn your skin. Um, and if you get art resin, it claims it's non-toxic, but nothing's that non-toxic when you're mixing plastics. So, right, thanks to my granddad, I've got an almost inexhaustible supply of surgical gloves. So that's always useful. Okay, so, um, Right, safety glasses, uh, which we'll need. Ooh, I've got some goggles. That ball used to get shot in. They weren't the right kind. Okay, now I would recommend breathing apparatus, but obviously if I wear that, you're not gonna hear what I'm saying, and I'm only doing a, a small uh, test. Okay, so I've got two types of epoxy resin. The first type is one that I get from Elchem Resins UK. Um, this I'm not using this at the moment. It's, it's got quite a good finish on it. Um, I don't think I've got any stuff in the studio with it with this finish. Uh, oh, that one over there. Doesn't matter. Um, at the moment, but I'm not going to be using this today. Uh, that's probably the easiest for you guys at home to get hold of. Um, this one I get from a company in Stoke that I can't remember the name of. Uh, oh, Easy Composites, obviously. Threw it on the on the um, tip. And this is Glass Cast Three. Now this was recommended to me by a friend who also works in resin and I've not had any problems with it so far. Okay, now you're going to need your resin, something to mix it in, and a creme brulee torch, just to be bourgeois. Okay, so now you want double the amount of this uh, base to the catalyst ratio. Um, now you're supposed to measure this out accurately. Um, which I usually do. Now, of course, when we're putting the gloves on, I can't open the thing. Ah, luckily I go climbing. So, there's the base. So we'll tip a bit of that in. Now, you should measure this out accurately. Uh, I'm not doing that today because um, the painting I'm working on is basically a test piece. Um, but you couldn't get into problems with it. If you don't measure it accurately, you can get into problems with it not curing properly. Uh, also, my studio's a bit cold, so it's uh, it's not an accurate science for me today anyway. So, a bit of that in there. Okay, next job, the catalyst. So, we want, remember, we want roughly, well, in your case, accurately, 50%. So then, you simply just mix those two together. Now depending on the epoxy resin that you're using, uh, it's got slightly different consistencies. This resin over here is very liquidy, but what I'm mixing together is a bit like the consistency of sort of thick PVA glue, maybe a bit stickier. So you need to give it a damn good mix. Damn good. Stir in all the bits and bobs. Okay, and repeat this process for a couple of minutes. And you'll see all the strands. Uh, with this particular resin that I'm using, what happens is uh, as it's uh, approaching uh, readiness, um, it goes a lot uh, more stirrable, not as thick, with a nice consistency. Not quite milk, but uh, you get the idea. So that is how you know when it's time to pour. So it goes a bit cloudy with all the bubbles as well from the reaction. And that's why we've got the creme brulee torch. So just be careful when using fire that you're not using it on anything flammable because that's just a pain. 
Okay, so seems to just about have the right consistency. Now it's a little bit cloudy, but I think that could be because of the um, temperature in the studio is not amazing. Right, so in this case, I'm just going to tip it on. It's a bit cloudy with all the bubbles. Let's see. So this is a test piece painting that I've had since university, and I've just tried I've tried so much stuff out on it. Eventually it will become a painting, I think, probably to get it framed. Right, okay, there we go. So that's tipped onto there. Now I have little pieces of uh, laminated card which uh, I use to spread stuff out. So of course you can just spread this around sort of thinly. Yeah, it's not the great it's not the greatest mix, but I think that's to do with the temperature of the studio because we've just come into uh, autumn. So I'll have to remember that for future reference. This is why we have test pieces to see what's going to go wrong when you introduce the not test pieces. So there we go. Now farm that out a little bit. Uh, okay, and it's a bit bubbly and a bit cloudy. So this is the fun part because we get to use fire. Okay, now you just waft the fire across and you see all the bubbles popping. All those clouds disappear because those clouds are in fact bubbles, mostly. Now be careful not to set the painting on fire. I have a fire blanket in the studio, uh, which is how I get away with not setting things on fire. Well, just in case I do. So I can be a bit braver. Yeah, so pop all those bubbles on the surface. And um, obviously, you lay your uh, canvas as flat as possible, or whatever you're working on. In this case, I'm working on board. And um, See, that's uh, still a bit cloudy because I've uh, got the mix wrong. There we go. So um, hopefully you have a bit more success than me. Remember, ambient room temperature. If you're working in a cold studio, warm it up first. Which I did. Not enough. Goodbye.